Do you want to be more confident on camera? Do you have a professional presence that you want to maintain, but you also feel like your videos are getting a little stuffy? Well, if that's you, then stick around because on today's episode, we're going to be talking about how to be confident, cool, and classy on camera. Stay stay tuned, folks. It's Be Live Weekly. Where entrepreneurs get the latest tips, tricks, and tactics for Facebook live streaming. Join us live every Monday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or type 5 into the comments now to subscribe to the show. Now, your host, Owen Video. Welcome back to Be Live Weekly, where we help Facebook live streamers grow their Facebook live show. I'm Owen Video. I'm here live every Monday at 12 p.m. PST, and you can subscribe to the show when you give me five. That's right. Pfft, type five into the comment section now if you're watching us on Facebook, and our magical chatbot will pick up and be happy to engage you on that adventure. I'm really excited for today's show. In fact, I got the kids' Michael Jackson wig out. That's what I, I'm doing, the Michael Jackson wig today, and my heart sunglasses because I put I bought these at the dollar store and then didn't even get a chance to wear them uh, this year. And that, it actually, it, it made me so sad. It made me unbelievably sad. And that's why I wanted to uh, to have a chance to kind of watch this, watch this today. Hey, if you're logging in on Facebook, don't forget to say hello. Tell me what you do and who you are in the comment section below. And I will pop your comment on screen like it's a magical number five like we got from Justin Brown, my man, over at Primal Video on YouTube. Guys, if you are on YouTube, go to Primal Video. Check out Justin Brown and doing uh, doing amazing things. Justin Brown says, love the hair, man. Well, look, bro, this is something that I take care of and I eat and I watch my health. So it's not just like a thing I was born with, okay? So glad that you could uh, be here today, my man, Justin Brown. Say you're here. Ha happy you're here. Aaron Garcia from San Marcos, California. I met Aaron Garcia at a BNI meeting. We actually knew each other face to face. And now here he is logging into Be Live Weekly. He's actually a Be Live user himself, streaming with Aaron and Veronica Live. Great to see you here, my man. Uh Justin Brown is saying, "Oh, one. That is actually that should be our our chatbot code almost. It's like, "Oh, one. That was actually my pager code back in the day was was 01 and he might even see my calendar back here. I've got the the 01 on the calendar. Elvira Souter is saying, "Hey hair man, I love it. Already getting nicknames. Hey, if you're just logging in, you're watching us on Facebook, don't forget to say hello. Tell me who you are and what you do in the comment section now because I'd love to get to know you as well as I know our guest for today. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be talking about how to be confident, cool, and classy in your live stream videos because I know so many of you out there, you want to let loose, but you want to stay professional. We're going to talk about the balance today, and we're also going to talk about how to get more engagement on these videos that you're producing with all of your heart and soul and passion. Our guest today is the perfect guest to talk on this topic today, Judy Fox is a video presentation expert. She rocks on LinkedIn using the hashtag Fox Rocks. She promotes, she does fun, lively, engaging videos that are professional and they get millions of views and thousands of comments, tons of engagements. Judy's going to be on the show today. She's telling us her tips for how we can get more engagement in our Facebook live stream shows. Judy Fox, welcome to the show. Audience cheering. Great to see you here, Judy. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Great to be here. <laughs> now, I know you're you're really used to being the one uh, uh, sort of doing things off the charts and a little bit wild and crazy. Uh, so I thought I would up the energy level here and pay no attention to my beautiful wife who is filming b-roll behind us <laughs> i uh, love it <laughs> judy fox uh you're you're you know you are big on linkedin talk to us a little bit about what you're doing there and why it's working so well i think i'm showing up as myself and i'm not afraid to entertain while also providing a ton of value and i think that's you know thinking about the business community and the business world 
Right. You know, we, at the same time, we want to go to work and have a little bit of fun and a little bit of joy in our work. Yeah. We don't want it to be boring all the time. Right. B does not have to stand for boring. <laughs> <laughs> what should it stand for then, Judy Fox? Uh, bonanza. <laughs> I love it. What an exciting word. We get a little belding for yeah. that that type of word. <laughs> well, let's take a minute and say hi to some uh, some of those uh, that are watching in the audience today. I want to give a big shout out to my good friend, Wanda Bader. She's a client. Her and I have gone through some courses together, and it's great to have her here. Rhonda Luongo is here. Huh? She is from Pennsylvania, and she offers an FDA cleared light therapy device and natural clean topical formulas that work together to reawaken the body's natural ability to renew and restore skin and hair. So earlier I asked name who you are and what you do. And, and that's what Rhonda nice. is doing. Fantastic. Isn't that a great, don't you like the way that she kind of like, she really summed it up for us. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Rhonda. It makes me want to get, get skincare, which I use a lot of by the way. <laughs> and I use laser light therapy on my lip. I don't know if you guys know this. I got hit in the face with the golf ball like four years ago, split my lip wide open and got a lot of that, that red light. I live, I love what you're doing is my point. Michelle Lawrence logging in says, hi, Owen. Hi, Owen. And of course, gospel Imara is logging in. Good to see you gospel. Jason Rodriguez. Wow, this broadcast, yeah, Jason. I really, really hate you, Jason Rodriguez. So, <laughs> so, and he knows why. He knows that inside joke. Jason's a good friend, and he totally just kind of like hoodwinked me there. Uh, Judy Fox, we're talking today about how to be how to be confident on camera, how to sort of be silly and engaging um, in your videos. And you are uploading video on LinkedIn. Correct. Which is largely thought of as sort of a stuffy type of site, right? Like, mm -hmm. like talk to me about like what LinkedIn's all about. LinkedIn is professional communications, but that again, I keep saying to people, it doesn't mean that you can't have emotion in your communications. For example, you can have, you know, surprise, you can have, um, joy. You can have all kinds of amazing, you know, energy that shows up in your videos on LinkedIn that is still professional. <laughs> right. So talk and about, so talk about how you, you, you know, how you balance those and we're going to get into it in deeper, in, in greater detail, but I want to, you know what, here's a good, idea. let's try this. Let me try this. I want to show our audience here a picture. Okay. Of Judy Fox on LinkedIn. And what we're looking at right now is, uh, is the screenshots of these pictures that you, uh, you have, uh, sent to us. I mean, you're doing some really, some very funny stuff on LinkedIn. And, and I think we think of LinkedIn as a more professional, a more professional site. How are you getting away with it? I think showing up with the very first focus being value. And value can show up in so many ways, but value is I gave some solid networking tips. Some right. networking tips that in the comments, people were saying, I'd never heard it phrased like that. I gave a tip that said, when you show up for a conference or an event that you're not comfortable at, that you can go into the sign-in table and maybe right at that touch point, that moment at that event, you can ask hey, is there anything you guys need help with? Especially right. if you're not familiar with the event, you know nobody and you're feeling really uncomfortable, that's a good way to get in with the event organizers. Right. might give you something to do at the event and gives you an option to kind of interact with people, especially if you're an introvert and you're nervous, offer to help. And I said that tip. And then I also, there was a tip that said, if you meet one person at this event, ask them to introduce you to somebody. Ooh, good. And that can start to multiply out the value. And so, you know, and what you're basically saying to people on LinkedIn is you're offering so much value. And then I said, I'm going to put a surprise message at the end of the video. And it was just a fun Snapchat filter that right. I just took a funny face and said, I actually said on that part of the video, I said, would you take me seriously if I had this filter on for the whole video? Right. But I'm providing that same value. And it was just a joke, but it was still something that reminds us that how you look and how you sound, value is always still there. And so it was kind of a fun little 
would you take me seriously if I had this video filter on the whole time during this message? That's basically right. what that face said. <laughs> right. Right. And it's a fun, it's a fun face, guys. Let me know in the comment section right now if you saw that face in your news feed, would you <laughs> stop on it? Let's take another look at it because I want everyone to see that face. Like, no, look I at that face. Thing. <laughs> the one on the left, if that's the one on somebody's left, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was not my clip uh, thumbnail. So it was the smiley, happy one with the uh... <laughs> right, right. But, it, but okay, you're so, right. It, so it sounds like again, what what you're saying is lead with value, and and even in the way that you're structuring your posts. You know, you're you're kind of letting them know there's going to be a surprise at the end. And in that surprise, you put on a filter and you did something silly. Yes. And I think don't be afraid to show up as yourself. That is naturally myself, just to send somebody value yeah. in any way that I work with people. And then I yeah. have a little bit of fun at the end because I just don't think it needs to be buttoned up all the time. So yeah, she yeah. is my alter ego. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's hilarious. And then Jeffrey Eatley is logging in. He's a mutual friend. Says Judy freaking rocks. Met her one time and she left a huge impression. Uh, that's because she ran over you with her car, Jeffrey. Uh, that's it was a Goodyear impression. That's the only right up, right up this area. Uh, we're kidding. Just watching her do her thing live was so inspirational. You know, you've got some you've got some really great uh, uh, tactics and, and, and tricks for engaging people with live video. And what we want to do today, folks, is we want you to take a look at what's working for Judy Fox on LinkedIn. And we want you to transfer it over to your Facebook live stream accounts because the same sort of approach works on Facebook when you're reaching a business audience. And I know that so many of you out there have a business that you're promoting. In fact, I'd love to know what is the name of your business in the comment section. Uh, put it in there now. I'm going to be showing these up on screen as we're going through because we want to celebrate you, the Be Live watcher, the Be Live user. And remember, if you're enjoying this show, you want to see more like it, type five into the comment section now that will subscribe you to the show. So let's start, um, uh, Judy. I want to unpack uh, sort of these these three big processes that I want to talk about. But let's just kind of start by walking us through, um, you know, these. So we've got, we talk about the prep, we've talked about the production, and we want to talk about the promotion of your videos. So first of all, talk to us about the prep work that goes into these videos. How do you plan? How do you prepare for content that you're going to stream uh, that you're going to upload to LinkedIn? Oh, goodness. <laughs> I think keeping track of those inspirational moments that you know, inside your heart you want to talk about. So we all live and breathe value all day long. For example, if you're consuming this video right now and you're watching Be Live TV, thank you very much, you can actually create content out of this. You can get on a video right after this and say, this is what I just watched and this is what I learned. And you can always constantly summarize your day in so many valuable moments. So yeah. <laughs> That's huge. That's huge. How many of you out there listening, just watching right now, just picked up a big tip there, right? When you watch content, do a video and, and tell people what you just learned from, from this content. So that's a fantastic tip in terms of, of getting ready and preparing. Do you, um, uh, Judy, when you're preparing your content, do you have like a content calendar that you create? Do you have any type of structured idea library that you use? Or do you just kind of like go by the the seat of your pants whatever whatever you're feeling like you're going to you're you're going to put into a live stream or into a, a video yeah i think both i think i definitely go by inspiration and kind of what's currently trending as a topic for example i want to have the freedom and flexibility to jump on those but i am jump on those like current hot topics like for example LinkedIn just announced LinkedIn Live that it's going to be coming out on the platform. And so, of course, I'm going to immediately turn around and try to create content and posts. And I went live with a couple YouTubers and I'm just kind of like available immediately and cleared out my schedule 
for those lives and for those contents and reading everything that I could get my hands on, networking in the DMs to say, hey, what do you know? What, what else do you know? Like just digging and saying, where can we get more information about this subject? Uh, that's fantastic. Now, uh, you know, is there anything that's off limits? Do you try to keep yourself focused on a topic or, or do you go where, where, like I said, like I mentioned, like the, where the wind takes you, so to speak. And uh, oh, go, go ahead. Answer. I was going to answer. I've got two more things I want to say. One go. is I personally leave myself voice messages about my own content that I'm hashing out. So for example, I will practice what I want to say that could go live and I'll just practice and I'll talk to myself. So I, <laughs> I will go for a walk and it looks like I'm talking maybe to somebody on the phone, but honestly, I'm just talking to myself. Yeah. How many of you guys in the audience right now, uh, practice what you're going to say in the parking lots, sort of like on your way up to the restaurant and so on and so forth. I know for me, that's big. Uh, I was, I was at gymnastics with my boy the other day and I'm practicing. I wasn't even streaming. I was practicing what I would say in the stream. And then I noticed there's a lady in her car with like a baby <laughs> daughter, you know, and a baby daughter, when you've got a baby daughter, you're kind of like, you're, you're protective, you know? And she's like, what is this guy doing? mumbling and talking to himself in a parking lot. You know what I mean? So it's real folks. It's real. How many of you guys practice? Let me know in the comment section. So Judy, you practice out loud. What else? Um, there was something else that you were saying and now I forgot. I know I'm all <laughs> over the map guys. You got to keep up. You got to keep I know. up. <laughs> well, I'm trying to remember. Oh, do I, um, schedule my content out? I definitely, yeah do and i'm headed that direction more and more but oh back to the pure signal that's what i call it if you're going to be selling something if you are going to be promoting something it's not necessarily that you get all salesy and you start talking about it but for example i love talking about networking people come to me and they want to take my content and consume my content because they know I'm gonna be providing value in about three topics. I'm gonna to be talking about LinkedIn, I'm gonna be talking about social selling, and I'm gonna be talking about networking. And that's it. I, I There are other things I'll talk about, but I keep back and keep going back every single time to the pure signal. And if I get off from that pure signal, I remind myself that that doesn't bring in my inbound leads. What brings in my inbound leads is the pure signal. Okay, that's that's huge. That's the third bell ding, and we're twenty <laughs> minutes. We're twenty minutes into the show, and I'm wondering if my bell is even going to make it. If you have questions for Judy Fox on how to be more engaging in your videos, ask your question in the comment section. She's here for you right now to answer your questions. So take advantage of of her time. Anna D'Onofrio, who's one of our favorites over here at BeLive TV, is saying, "I tend to write myself a script." I run through it on video before the post, yet the practice is a great point. I agree. I like to even get, I know it sounds silly. I like to get my lips wrapped around the question just so that I know I've got the cadence uh, and mm -hmm. I've got sort of the, I do warm ups every day. And remember, I know it sounds silly. I split my lip. And so, you, you know, this is all like, there's a scar here that it doesn't move like the rest of my lips. There's no nerves there. So, you know, I've got, I get that warm up and I like to go through it. Uh, Judy Fox, do you write scripts at all? Do you have a format that you remember? Like it's a, it's a simple five point format or how do you structure your live stream so that there's, um, order to the chaos? So I will create a bullet point list, but <laughs> one thing that I do and that somebody pointed out on one of my live streams recently is I do interruptions because I think that does keep the audience going. And I think it's good to not just be bullet point, bullet point, bullet point, but I mean, I'll throw in a fox, I'll throw in my dog, I'll throw in uh, you know, a wig. I have a couple wigs here. So <laughs> little pattern interruption, but somebody pointed that out the other day and I said, but it keeps people's attention and yeah. you can stay engaged longer and people will watch live streams longer, especially if you're being value and entertaining at the exact same time. Now, you do, you, do you find, 
do you find that the the okay so for those of you guys that missed it judy was saying she'll put on wigs she'll put on filters and, uh, <laughs> and and these different things now do you find and here it is here it is i love it do you find that that takes oh. look at that folks it's not there it's a dirty blonde wig but i love it i wish i had like uh like like some type of cat call uh, uh sound effect or something <laughs> maybe yeah the the pc police would come and, and and burn down my house but here's the thing like do you find that wearing wigs and using filters uh takes away from the professionality of your message thereby decreasing the quality of the lead you're receiving or eliminating the lead altogether does it help your live streams talk to us about that that balance uh, me, for example, I have just embraced being myself. And I think what I have found is I've found the most fun people to work with. The people who are the, either they're working for a company and they're internally like, oh my gosh, I just love what you're putting out into the world. And please keep putting out more of that. And I don't find that it hurts my business at all. And I think a lot of people get scared being themselves is going to hurt their business, but I find it actually has blown up my business. Now, how talk to us a little bit about, about that business model. Tell me about, you know, what it is that you're doing as a business and how you're driving that traffic. Like, what does that funnel look like? So right now I am mostly working with, Clients that have come to me that are interested in determining if LinkedIn, they can get their fill in the top of their sales funnel. So I help mostly corporations or small businesses work on their LinkedIn content and video strategy. And that is what I do. So and how do I, they oh, go on? Yeah. How do they find you? So you do a video and then do they click on a link? Are you sending them to like a link or, or do you put a link in your post? Do you say, Hey, I'm available. Just check me out whenever. Like, what's your call to action like? And do you put one in every video or is it like certain videos are designed to convert? Your thoughts, Judy Fox. I almost never, no, I wouldn't say never. I would say very rarely in the video do I put a strong sales message. I will say things like, DM me for more conversation about this topic. If you need yeah. help with this topic, if you are interested in talking more, I'm available. Most of my inbound conversations and DMs, they happen because you've put out so much value that people can't, they just reach a point where they're like, you have to be able to do this for me too. Yeah. And I think because you are on LinkedIn, it's already, and I know we're talking about other live streaming platforms, but I will say that if you can take a live video from another platform and put it on LinkedIn with maybe some edits, that would be so valuable. Uh, yeah, huge, uh, huge tip there. I think worthy of another uh, belding is is uh, re <laughs> repurposing that live video strategy, right? Like being in a place where where you go live and then you download the video from from Facebook and then you do what? Just do it. You just do it. Did you re-upload it to LinkedIn? And don't freaking worry about like, oh, is the algorithm going to read you? Like, just do it and see what type of results you actually get from completing this process. Hey, if you agree with that statement and you think that we should all just do it, then share this video on your timeline right now or tag a friend that needs to share their business or passion message. We're talking with Judy Fox. We're talking about video tips that will create more engaging content. And you really, you really bring so much, uh, uh, so much stuff to the table. Natalie in our audience is asking a question, and I want to go to her question. She says, "Is there any recommendation on how to do video on specifically LinkedIn?" So this is kind of it's an interesting question. What What are your thoughts, Judy, on on the LinkedIn? Um, uh, you, you know, uh, what, what would I call it? characteristics, right? The, the characteristics of a good LinkedIn video. I would say if you're building your audience and you're starting out, try to start with shorter videos. You're building trust. You're building that no factor so people can get to know you. And to be honest, people are more likely to watch a shorter, like less than three minute video okay. if you're brand new on the platform. 
Now I have expanded and have uploaded 10 minute videos because that is the limit. 10 minutes is the max. Good to know. But again, it's nice to start out and I recommend you're going to get more traction if in more eyeballs at the very beginning, if you start short and just kind of drop the value, don't qualify who you are. You know, for example, a lot of the videos are different. They jump right into the value. Like in that video that you showed with the example of me side to side, I dropped right into, I'm going to give you two networking tips. I mean, do you just start from the very beginning telling people exactly why they would watch the rest of the video? Amazing points from an amazing video creator, Judy Fox. I usually go into those like template, like things to say when I need like a minute to switch between screens. Oh, <laughs> you know, and everything though we're doing. So one debater sort of asked the, the, the same question is how long are your videos and, and, mm -hmm. and, or your live stream. And we're tired. It's a 10 minute limit, but you want to start small to gain an audience and really to condition them to what you're doing. Hey, I like this person. It's worth three minutes of my time. And when you, yeah. when you start to gather sort of that, that, uh, that audience or that likes what you're doing, you can sort of expand on it and maybe bring them, uh, bring them over to, um, to 10 minutes. Now we, I want to sort of move into the production. Now things that you do on camera and maybe we're even dabbling in that a little bit, but let me ask you this question. Do you have any rules about shooting video? Like you should never do this. You should always say this. Uh, do, do you have brand standards? Like, do you think about those things when you go live or is it just kind of like, here's what I do and whatever comes out, whatever comes out. I do think about that. I do use my hashtag Fox rocks because if you brand yourself on LinkedIn, there is the ability to follow a hashtag and you can type that into LinkedIn. So I can l make sure that my content gets in front of the people who are really, really wanting to see it by branding that consistently across the platform. So I do Consistently make sure that's in there. And I, uh, you know, I just make sure to say things like, you know, thank you and thank you for following at the end. But again, keeping it short, it's very succinct. It's like people in the business world, they want to get on LinkedIn and not be just waiting for the value to drop in these videos. They want to have it. They want to get it good. They want to get it fast and keep it entertaining. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sounds, sounds like my love life. So, yeah. you know, so many, <laughs> so many outrageous things get said on this, on this. I station. think outrageous is fine. We're all adults. We're <laughs> all, I mean, you know, part We're, of me says I've read the, I've read the statements and I just read a post today and it's going viral on LinkedIn and it talks about let's not make LinkedIn Facebook. The problem though is, is we're not one dimensional human beings that just fit in a box that are just yeah. these business. We're business and we're humans. Yeah. And mistakes happen. People can be fun and that doesn't take away from all the value you can bring to this world. Yeah. Phenomenal. How many of you out there in the audience right now struggle with imposter syndrome? I'm going to write that down. How many of you struggle with imposter syndrome? I want to write that down again. And you see, I repeat myself when I need just another minute before I can look at the camera, because what I'm about to say, I'm going to repurpose. And so what I'm going to do right now is actually write down 1231 and then I'll go into it again. How many of you out there suffer from imposter syndrome? Let me know yes or no in the comment sections right now. You know, this is where you think, oh, I'm not good enough to actually do my video or, you know, maybe I'm not, I really shouldn't be, I'm not the right person. And, and this can really prohibit you from doing your best work on camera. Uh, Judy Fox, you're a video expert. You're uploading tons of great content. How do you uh, coach through and deal with imposter syndrome? Oh, I think surrounding yourself by your colleagues on the platforms. For example, I feel like I surround myself and consume your content, Owen. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, I think you build strength in your muscles by flexing them. And I will say one time recently, I was having a bit of kind of even hang up about going live and I ended up networking with my friend and, you know, colleague on the platforms. And he said, okay, we're going to go live. I'm going to go live first on my channel. Cool. And then after, as you, you get on and listen and engage in the comments, 
and then I'll shout you out and you're going to go live right after me on your channel. Yeah, and I'll good. direct everybody over to your Facebook page for you to go live. Wow. That's collaborating and taking care of each other and lifting each other up and continuing the conversation. So I got to give my perspective on the same topic that he was talking about. And I think that's incredible. That's an incredible way of kind of giving yourself that boost. And we both felt great afterwards. We felt like we both built our communities and got to have a conversation, but we weren't live on the screen at the same time, if that makes sense. No, it makes a lot of sense. And uh, collaborations like, <clears throat> like that are so valuable, especially when those collaborations um, are authentic in nature, right? Like it's not, it's not so much a follow me and I'll follow you type of I'll help you situation. It's really more of a let's grow together. In fact, one of the hashtags that we love is, is we rise together. And you know, a, an indication of a good leader is one who brings all of the ships up. And you know, that over here at, at our company, we, we believe in that. We believe in, in in setting a standard and saying when you're a part of, of what we're doing, you're going you're going to come up to this standard. Otherwise, you're going to you're going to find yourself uh, sort of falling off, you, you know, in a very yeah. natural in a very natural way. And nobody nobody really wants to be there. Hey, if you're just logging in, we're talking with Judy Fox of Fox Rocks, who is a LinkedIn video expert. She's sharing her LinkedIn video tips with us live streamers <laughs> to help us create more engaging videos. We've got some questions uh, coming in from the audience. Wanda Bader is saying, I have an easier time speaking of a, in speaking in front of a live audience versus a Facebook live. Judy, have you any experience with that where, where live video is almost more intimidating than uh, like being in front of people live? Yeah, because you can't picture anybody on the other side of that video camera. And if you're just sitting in your room by yourself, it can feel really weird to try to not only engage in the comments and keep your eye on the comments, but also stay engaged on the camera, keep your mind on what you want to talk about. I don't know how people do it. That's why I end up probably sometimes going slightly off topic sometimes. And then, right. but I'm still going to challenge myself to do it because I'm only going to get better the more I do it. Right. That's it. I'm just going to get better and better. Yeah, I've got a lot of clients. We do a lot of camera coaching through our group programs. And you should check us out at thevideosalesacademy.com. Great new content over there. We coach a lot of streamers and uh, business owners that are uploading video in experimenting and in trying different things and in, in really making sure that you've got some, some basic fundamentals in place um, before you go and upload live video. But at the same time, we say, look, your first five videos, maybe 10, are going to be horrible, right? So yeah. just get those first 10 out of the way as fast as you can, right? And then you can start getting into sort of intermediate and not quite a beginner level. Would you agree with that, Judy Fox, or do you have a different opinion? Uh, no, I should... completely agree with that. <laughs> so talk a little bit about the importance of just going live or as, as Shia says. Just do it! Right, when it comes to live streaming. <laughs> I think a couple of things with the first times I went live, I did them in smaller groups on Facebook. Right. So there was a Facebook group that I had created, whether I did it on purpose or not, it was a small group of 10 people Right. <laughs> and I went live, <laughs> but it felt more like I was just doing a live video call and just happened to be sending it out to 10 of my friends. And that felt more intimate and safer. Right. And then now I, you can grow over time. And then that's when you can go out live to thousands of people and it's not as scary and you just feel like it's going to be okay. What really happens at the end of the day, if you mess up nothing, like right. you're, you're still a great, amazing person and you still have all the knowledge inside of your head. And that's why I do things to challenge myself, like wear goofy um, hair, you know, you know, whatever wig, all kinds of stuff, because it really doesn't matter. You're the same person inside and we're all here trying to make it on this planet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're just humans. And, and you know, what happens is uh, folks, is you start to come out with numbers, right? And this is the amazing thing about video and business and productivity is that you start to come out 
with numbers when you start to try different things. You know, you put a wig on and you get to see, hey, when I wore the wig, my numbers were larger than they were when I didn't wear the wig, right? And so now yeah. you've got something that you can work with. When I when I did the the sound effects, my numbers were maybe smaller than when I didn't use the sound effects. And you start to add different seasons and spices in uh, to your video content so that the audience in your gets, content. Yeah. And they get, <laughs> they get experience. They get to see what else you have. Um, I think it adds for a better listener experience, but also helps you to come out with numbers so that you're knowing, Hey, when I, you know, play this song or show this image and this graphic, for example, we notice that when we're graphic heavy, when I'm heavy with graphics and lower thirds our our viewership spikes. And so our goal on our show is is to all you know always have graphics moving around, right? And, oh, and be in a place where there's always something on the screen. We do as best we can, uh, but sometimes it can be a challenge. Knowing those things helps us to craft a better show. So we've got uh, some questions coming in from our audience. Uh, Rhonda Luongo is asking, where can I learn more about branding myself and using a catchphrase in the video? What advice, Judy Fox, do you have for Rhonda with this particular question? Um, I think if you gather some of your, um, even if you have to do like a Zoom call to gather some of your friends that are in either a similar space or somewhere that they can brainstorm with you, I think that's how I ended up coming up with my own branding. Because some people can tell you more about yourself from when you're inside the jar you can't see sometimes the branding of yourself from the outside. And so bringing in other people's perspectives gives you that energy. And then I always like to say, if you can try to have a little bit of fun, sometimes things come out when you get to joke around and have right. fun. Right. <laughs> Right. Rhonda, you know, some other tips to consider are, you you know, you what you already had a great catchphrase in the comments. You kind of nailed that. Your, your catchphrase should be, you know, really target who the audience is. Right. I think too many of us are going after everybody when we should be honing in on a very specific soccer moms or executive dads type of demographic uh, and, and talk about the benefits right? Not necessarily the product you serve. I, I, I hear these catchphrases that are like, you know, breakfast shakes and, 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 and X, Y, Z thing when it's really about weight loss or it's really about feeling good or, or energy elevation, focus on the benefits that your, uh, uh, your, your product or your service provides. And I think as always, you, you know, under 15 words, I know a lot of, there's going to be a lot of experts out there that say seven words. And I think that when you're an expert, seven words is great. At first, try to keep it under 15 words, right? So it's something that you can burst out and say it the same way every single time. Judy Fox, do you do you have any like branding thing that you do that is the same every way? Do you are you just are you just kind of hey, it's Judy Fox, Fox Rocks, subscribe to my show, I da 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 any, anything like that that you do the same way every single time? Well, because I just launched a podcast, I now say it's the Judy Fox show and I level up your business with heart and humor. And I say that over and over. Love it. So yes, that is where I, and it's funny because now in such a short amount of time after launching that podcast, people are hearing and they're really grabbing onto those words, level up your business with heart and humor level. It's just, it's fun. It's catchy. It's got a little good energy to it. And I guess the way I say it, and I chose certain words because if you listen to enough of what you hear online, you're going to gravitate towards what you want to say. It has to come from inside of you. So yeah. try not to overthink and just grab onto the words that you love. And I started making a list when I was listening to podcasts. I loved certain words and phrases and I just grabbed onto a bunch of them and then merged them into my own voice of what I wanted to sound like. Yeah, that's. Uh, phenomenal. I can definitely relate. Uh, one word that I really love is the word pletora. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like bonanza. Yeah, like bonanza. <laughs> yeah, it's up there. Bonanza. And that's one more point. Try to put a thread throughout your videos. Try to remember what you talked about at the beginning of the live to the end of the live so you can tie it all together. Yeah, that's huge and not a strong suit for me. We'll come in on Bonanza and we'll leave on Plethora and I'll for I'll forgotten the entire thing. Hey, if you're just watching the show, if you're just logging in, we're talking 
with Judy Fox, and you are watching Be Live Weekly. If you like this content and want to hear more, remember you can type five in this in the comment section below to subscribe to the show, and we will send you an alert every week we go live. I want to give a big shout out to Tiffany Lafontaine. I love that's got to be what like uh, Creole, maybe like Southern. Uh, you know, I'm not giving you guys bad looks just so you can't see me. Tiffany has been leaving phenomenal comments. This being like one of the pinnacles. I was trying to find something uh, that she had written because I wanted to give her a, a, a big, a big air five for just being a great engager in the comment section. Uh, and she's having fun with us as well. Wanda Bader is saying the video sales Academy is awesome guys. Go check that out. That is my latest course. It hasn't even come out yet, but you can get the free guide and start getting the emails and learning about what the course does and see if it's right for you. Uh, Anna D'Onofrio, of course, inviting Carlos in. We love, I'm guessing it's Carlos Phoenix and we love, uh, we love Carlos Phoenix. Lots of great comments coming in. Want to give a big shout out again to Jason Webster as well really commenting and, and it sounds like like Jason, someone who knows what he's talking about because you really relate to the pains. He says, um, I try to live life this way, but I'm more a private person. So I'm w working through my boundaries. I hope that it helps that I just exposed your insecurities to the entire Be Live <laughs> audience. Well, somebody made a really good point the other day that said, you know, we forget what personal personal can be just sharing that you're at a restaurant but you don't have to share the whole time that you're at this restaurant just be like hey we're walking into a restaurant we're having a an amazing anniversary meal whatever it is you're celebrating and then that's it and then put your phone down and be connected to everything that's happening in this restaurant and your friends and your family but there's moments that you can share that still connect you to your audience that you could go live and do and they lives don't have to be ours. <laughs> right. Right. You know, they and they really should be, I think, follow that same model of of go live for a for 10 minutes, mm -hmm. you know, and take it from there. I'll tell you this though, guys. Um, at that 20 minute mark, and this is why we live stream for an hour, at that 20 minute mark, you'll see spikes on Facebook Live. And and you'll see a huge spike in 20 minutes, and you'll see some people oh, sort of drop. Then you'll see okay, another okay, spike okay. 20 minutes later. And that, you know, if you stream for an hour, you get three, you know, 20 minute spikes along the way. Uh, and that, that can be a, a really positive experience. So we like to keep that, uh, keep that in mind while Ju while Judy is uh, changing here. Um, well, wait, I got a question we, from do a vote, uh, blonde or brown wig. Now, what do you guys want to see blonde or here? Let's, let's do this. <laughs> I'm going to put a poll, uh, which do you I'm going to put which hair color. Then we'll go blonde. I'm at literally making the, the poll right now. Nice. And brown. Start live poll. Okay, so it's going to pop up on your screens uh, right now. <laughs> I think. Oh, and we don't have live streaming on LinkedIn yet. That's yeah, no, it's cool. close. You know, let's, let's talk about that. Let me answer Anna's question here. So Anna... And is that, and again, I'm going to re oops. Um, uh, I'm going to repurpose this. So I'm going to do that one, uh, do that one again. Uh, Anna is asking, Owen, are you seeing the same pattern of beginner live streamers, uh, going on to LinkedIn now a lot? It's a great question. Cause a lot of you guys have seen that LinkedIn live is, uh, is being announced. It's not everywhere yet, but I am absolutely seeing and I'm encouraging live streamers, especially BeLive.tv users, you know, to use the LinkedIn video feature, whether it's uploading or live stream, if you get that, to use that to brand yourself and create the presence that, hey, you have a much larger show, you know, on Facebook Live that they can connect to through BeLive.tv. It's so simple to upload a video a week, two videos a week on LinkedIn that say, hey, I've got this great show. If you're a businessman and you want, you know, healthy alternatives or a businessman, I do marketing services. You want to check that my show. I've got a show on Facebook Live and using LinkedIn as a traffic source because as a live streamer, you know, you should be live streaming on, on Facebook Live and then using the other platforms to drive content back, people back to your main content on, on Facebook Live. Judy Fox, uh, what are you seeing in terms of the, the audience on LinkedIn? Is the audience on LinkedIn, in terms of what's working with video, are we seeing more of your style arise? Are we seeing... 
uh, more of a of a just film and go style. What what seems to be the thing that's taking off on LinkedIn video? I think it's a lot of different styles, but the ones I see that are resonating are high high value, high energy. So if you are kind of walking and talking, that's good. If you are sitting in a conference room, but you're being very invested in what you're talking about, that's working. I think at the end of the day, it becomes more about, you know, whether you get a million eyeballs on it, or if you get 10,000, if it converts, right. that's what's the most important thing. If it's building business reputation, brand recognition, that's so, so important. And I think people hold themselves back thinking, okay, I only got 500 views on this video. Well, those 500 eyeballs may be the most ideal 500 clients that you could imagine ever getting. And they all have budgets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huge. How many of you guys out there understand the pain of the budget, you know, uh, objection? It's like, well, think about it. Like, well, you know, in two months I'll have the money and 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 this type of thing. Tell me if the budget uh, objection has ever got into your way. I know that we've dealt with it a lot. And that's why, you know, when you start to create video is, you know, you can start to target by your content, the types of people you want to attract. You know, you don't want to be, you know, for example, if you offer, uh, you know, at your, at, at your, uh, auto shop, you know, free oil change or, you know, you're going to track the freebies, what we call the mm -hmm. free pull, right? And that might <laughs> yeah. be good for your business. If you have a lower price point business, that might be good for your business. But if you want to track a higher price point, you know, doing things like video and especially live video, uh, can be very helpful for, uh, for your brand. Got a great question in coming, uh, from Tim. Tim is saying, hi guys, what kind of mics do you use? for your live streaming. Judy Fox, start with you. What kind of mic are you using right now? I have my Blue Yeti. My Blue Yeti. And do you like it? I do. I love it. It's very, it's straightforward. I've never had any issues with it. So I've been happy with it. So the, the Blue Yeti is a great microphone. It's a USB microphone. It'll work on a variety of different computers. What gets me about the uh, the the Yeti is that it's USB only. And that's why I use mm -hmm. the ATR2100. And if you go to my website, owen.video slash kit, I actually, it will take you to a link of all the, the top three live stream pieces of equipment that I use, all of which I'm using right now, as a matter of fact. But the ATR2100 a uh, phenomenal mic. I love that it has an on and off switch right here. Does yours have that? Yes. I also have other mics, but they're too far away for me to grab. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I always yeah. use this one for live streaming. So. I love the on and off switch because I, you know, it's like I'm gonna cough. Mm -hmm. I can turn the mic off and and cut the sound. But I also love the end connector here, Tim, is that the end connector here will give me a uh, USB adapter so I can go into Mac or a PC, but also it has an XLR. So what I do is I, I have a soundboard over here for some of the other stuff that we do. I could plug it into the soundboard. I could use it for the local school talent show if I wanted to do something like that over there too. So uh, both great mics. I would say both very popular mics and, and um, uh, serving very different needs. So great, great question there. And we'd love to hear your guys' questions in the audience, in the comments section below if you've got questions um, for us. Uh, Judy, let's talk about promoting your video. So you've sort of walked us through your prep and you've walked us through uh, your process a little bit and your philosophy of video. What do you do when the video's done? How do you get this video out uh, into, into different eyeballs? And I know that you're working predominantly in, in LinkedIn, but and you're repurposing sort of elsewhere. Mm -hmm. But are you driving? Is it all organic or do you engage in a workflow of like, sh let me share this. Let me tag five people uh, and these different things. How do you promote your video once once it's uh, it's produced? I do a couple of things, but you're right. It's all about testing again to see what kind of reach you can get. I think the best thing that I've learned with LinkedIn is if you live on your content right when you post it. So again, forgetting about the algorithms completely and forget about the time that you're posting and the day of the week, focus on the fact that you have an hour after you post and either tag people or go all in on the comments. So if you get any likes or comments, especially if all you're seeing are likes and you're not really driving conversation because your copy and your video should be doing something that drives conversation. 
So you've got to have that part of your video. And if you have that and you're getting one or two comments, well then go all in on those comments, create more conversation, yeah. try to ask more questions, tag somebody else and say, I've had people tag me recently and say, Hey Judy, we really need your input on this conversation happening here. Cause we really value what you have to say. The LinkedIn community is very professional and it's very similar to the workplace. If you're sitting in your cubicle and somebody's having a meeting and they think you would provide amazing input, they're going to come grab you yeah. at your cubicle and drag yeah. you into this meeting. I feel like the same thing happens on LinkedIn. Ta let's say, say that one more time about tagging because I want to use this. Mm -hmm. I want to repurpose that. And the, the microphone went out because you're using a blue Yeti. But that's that's a it's a whole we're not we're not gonna go into into uh, into that situation. Uh say that again about about tags. So when you tag people, you are creating more of a conversation with that individual person. Again, you would want to tag people that you've either been in close connection with or it makes sense that you tag them. For example, they're on the platform talking about sales frequently and you're having a conversation on somebody else's content or post, you could tag them to bring them into that conversation on the thread of your video, yeah. which will make your content go further on the platform. Yeah. The more engaged the content is, and a couple more tips, again, it's not just trying to spam out your content, but if you have connections that you think would really appreciate your content, right. you can send it to them and say, I really, really would appreciate it, but don't pull on that social capital all the time. Right. And expect that if you don't do anything on their content, that they'll keep coming back to yours. Oh, so. phenomenal. Yeah. Phenomenal advice. Like there's, there's this like, oh, it worked once it got him here once. So I'm going to do it again and again and again. I think a better idea is to kind of like think about who you can tag and let that affect the type of video that you're going to do. And so now you think, oh, I'm going to reach out to, to this guy and this guy on my LinkedIn video, see what happens. And it sort of goes back to that testing. What are your thoughts on that, Judy Fox? Well, I think what you said, which is if you're seeing somebody post something similar on the platform and it inspires you to make a video, that's a great way to continue the conversation again, to collaborate and to make people feel like you're just having a conversation around a business table and you're all talking about the subject, but you're giving your input. And that way it makes sense to tag that person and to say, hey, I just saw so-and-so's video on the platform. It talked about this. This is what I'm talking about in my video. Another thing to pay attention to, to give LinkedIn an indication that this is a valuable piece of content that is always gonna be engagement in the content, shares, likes, comments, but the longer the comments and the longer, if you can, people click that see more button, there's kind of a see, dot, 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 see more. It's not, right. um, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, can't yeah, see yeah, the after the text post. is full. Yeah. So you want to make sure that you are really writing thoughtful comments, engaging comments, and you'll build trust. Everyone will know that when you're commenting on the platform, you're not just dropping nice video. You're actually providing value in the comments. Yeah. And yeah. that's, you know, I think that's a big part of the promotion tip that we lose on, on, on Facebook as well, because you, we can get, so right now we're at 175 comments, by the way, folks, let's see if we can get that to 200 type five in the comment section. Now, if you're not already subscribed to the show or just say hello, right? Let's say something low value just to get to 200 so that when they tally the B live stats next week, I'm up there. Um, you, you know, we're missing out on this opportunity to engage because on Facebook live, we get so many comments, right? But you don't have to engage with all of them, right? Like one of the things that I try to do is I keep notes of where you guys ask questions. So when, when Tim asks a question about Mike's, I wrote that at 1249, we answered that question. So now what I can do is I can go in the comments and say, oh, uh, into his question, say, by the way, we answered this at the 49 minute mark if you want to come back. And what that does is it tags Tim and it might bring Tim back to the to the uh, video for increased watch time and another view. Uh, plus, it might, uh, you know, get into Tim's friends news feeds as well. Right. And and, re and, and get more of that viral uh, potential. And so the same thing is happening. Uh, same thing is happening on, uh, on LinkedIn. 
Now, exactly. a lot of you guys, a lot of you guys out there have asked again what my new course was about, and you're asking for the link. So I want to take just a minute out and and get that uh, out there. So the the course, if you guys want to check out my new course on how to make sales with online video using my video sales funnel model. I'm going to teach you the ins and the outs, what to say in your video, how your landing page should look, how to structure your offer. You can go to thevideosalesmachine.com slash download. And when you, uh, when you get there, what you'll see is this beautiful looking uh, perfect business video template. And when you download that template, there is a hidden training on the back end of that template that'll walk you through my processes and you'll get an early invite to the course when we launch at the end of, it might be the end of this week, middle of next week. And I have to double check with my promotions team. Uh, but we're, the course is coming out very soon. We're working night and day on it. So I hope you will go to thevideosalesmachine.com and check it out now. If you're just joining us, we're talking with Judy Fox, LinkedIn video expert and consultant to the stars. Uh, you're you're actually helping people learn LinkedIn video. Talk about that. Yeah, I do strategy sessions and we do either, the main thing is if you're gonna make LinkedIn video and yes, you're gonna drive, you're gonna do social selling, you're gonna do all kinds of things, at the end of the day, if you don't have them funneling into the top of your sales funnel or your website or whatever your biggest offer that you have, your company, whatever it is, you're not going to capture any of those views and engagement from your content on LinkedIn. So you mm -hmm. definitely want to optimize your profile and by optimize your profile, make it, it's a website, it's a brochure, it's a place for people to land. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a great point. You know, I think that we give a lot of uh, like too much credit to the website, right? We we're big believers in the landing page, right? Have a specific page. If like I love the DM thing, hey, DM me. You're opening up the the welcome to uh, direct messages and and folks, the direct messages, right? Hear me, hear me now, right? The direct messages is where you will grow your business. These are the super fans, the people that are willing to reach out and they want to continue a conversation with you. It might, you might feel like, Oh, I'm only getting, you know, this, I only got like three DMS last week, like, uh, meh, right. But in reality, those are your three buyers and they might even be three buyers in your elevated mastermind course, which you need to have an elevated mastermind course above your, your normal everyday what you sell because you need to have more to sell these super fans. You know, in the DMs, what's your advice, Judy? Are, are we like, hey, get into my program? Um, uh, are we using it to like immediately sell them back or do you engage them there and maybe even like give them some free value? Your thoughts, Judy Fox? I give tons of free value in the DMs in a way that I can show up. So I can very quickly leave a voice message back for somebody and say, hey, this is what I'm up to. Like, what are you up to? Or I can provide value by giving some feedback, especially if they've asked me a specific question. And that's where I direct people. I say, if you have a specific question, let me know in the DMs because I don't know how to respond to hi, hello, how are you doing? I go right into, I wanna have a real conversation about a real subject. And <laughs> sorry, I'm reading the comments. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I go into real conversations about real subjects. And so what I do say is I say, hey, I'm available for any questions that you have. And if you need inspiration to figure out what to ask me, go consume my videos and my content. I will kind of kick you right back out of my DMs, not in a rude way, but in a way that says, I'm here to have professional conversations. And that does right. kind of clear up the subject of DMs that have been frustrating for other people. If somebody doesn't make it very clear that they have a question or we have a conversation in front of us, I, I say, I respectfully will probably you know, close this conversation until we can reach that point. Yeah. Uh, uh, really, really important. Uh, so much of what you just said. And, and, and I hope that you guys were listening. I had, I had tuned out for a minute. Um, okay. we, we, <laughs> Sam, Sam, I've got Sam cart coming to my, the door is open. No, I'm kidding. I'm totally kidding. I'm having fun with you guys. <laughs> you know, I, it actually, uh, first of all, we got to uh, 200 comments. Yay! We got to it. So, <laughs> 
Thank you guys uh, so much for, uh, for, uh, for, for playing with that. We're actually out of time, but I, I do have a, one last question I want to leave with, and then we're going to give everyone a, a chance to follow Judy and to s send out your links because I know you're going to be in uh, Social Media Week with Jessica Phillips, who's just a great yes. friend of the show. Uh, um, and, and I want to ask you this, okay. Um, because your profile is all business and you mentioned making it clear that you're here for all business, but you're also, you're, you're also what some might call an attractive woman. Okay. Now I'm, I'm married to the hottest woman in the world. So every, every woman to me, besides my wife looks like Buffalo. I'm so, I'm sorry. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I just, my eyes don't work the same anymore because I, I only have eyes for her. But my, my point is this, is that, you know, you're upbeat, you're attractive, you're uplifting. And I know we got Jessica Phillips out there. I know that we have, uh, Anna is out there and, and other women, Tiffany. We have other example, attractive men that are out there. We do, but I'll tell you, <laughs> I, I want to go into an area that is, is rarely sort of marked upon. Do you get, and how do you handle uh, responses that come from your video that are not all business that are more like, Hey, how you doing uh, flirty and, and, and maybe even a, a little bit um, inappropriate. How, how would you, or how do you deal with those situations as, as they happen? I actually saw a public comment on one of my friend's videos today. And he said, you're looking pretty. And it had nothing else. It just said, you're looking pretty. And so I went over to his profile. I made sure that I was not connected to him. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> I don't need it. I, I mean, it's not something that I'm on the platform to experience or to promote that kind of conversation. And, right. you know, we're having business conversations on this platform. I'm talking about networking tips. I'm talking about you know, we're having valuable conversations. So right. I don't need anything adding to that. So I will delete those comments. Some people say, leave them up and no, just delete it. I want to send a message to all men and women that we don't, we're not having those conversations. Yeah. I think when you leave it up, you, you, you open the door for social proof to start working and you sort of say, well, if he's allowed, well, then I'm allowed. And, and then, you know, maybe she's allowed and they're allowed. And it's one of those things where it's like, you want to be professional, then keep it professional, right? Like we don't delve into certain topics on this show or on my other show. Uh, but over coffee, heck yeah, we'll talk about politics and religion. Like th those are the conversations that make life worth living. But you know, when we're on the platform, we're here to show you what you can do with BeLive.TV. And it doesn't matter what you believe about X, Y, or Z right now today. You know what I mean? And so I wanted to ask that question because I feel like our audience is, is – uh, there's a large amount of women in our audience that maybe are dealing with that and they want to hear how you're dealing with that and they want to be prepared for it. So Judy Fox, we're grateful that you would uh, engage in that with us. Guys, we are five minutes over time and we still have 36 live viewers, which has been around our, our top. We hit 41 a little earlier, but that means we've had a great show. And I just want to thank Yay. you guys out there watching uh, for being a part of that and making this show better and better and better. Each time we go live, Judy, we've got to wrap up. Tell our audience, yeah. how do we stay in touch with you? J-U-D-I-F-O-X.com. That is the place where you can find everything. I put all my social media handles at the top and you're good to go. That is so ridiculous. <laughs> it, what? It does. I, I'm Owen Hemsath. Okay. I'm Owen Hemsworth, oh. right? So it's like, go to Owen H E M, blah, 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 blah. And that's why I go by Owen video because it's like, Owen, but you can't get OwenVideo.com. That's taken by Andy Owen in Michigan. So instead, I've got, it's like Owen.video. And yours is just like J U D I Fox. I say that it's got an I, though. The J U D I messes some people up, it's but true. It it's happens. true. Hey, Mike Swain, we want to say uh, thank you for being thank here. Great you. to see you. Rhonda uh, is saying thank you. You rock. Tiffany is saying thank you. You rock. Hey, guys, I love you so much. I'm so glad to see you guys tuning in. Don't forget to join us next week for another fantastic episode of Be Live Weekly. Thank you for watching Be Live Weekly with Owen Video. If you enjoyed the show, then share this video on your timeline right now. Just do it! To see past episodes or get alerts for new episodes, type 5 in the comment section now. And join us next week with new tips to help you grow your Facebook Live show.